Hello and welcome to another episode of the Fully Charged Plus podcast, uh, effectively coming to you from the Netherlands. Well, not really. I'm not in the Netherlands, but my guest is Paul Harms, who I, we're talking to today. Really a fascinating man. With I, What's frustrating is that he's done so much that I, I, I'm actually, I've got to interview him again because he's, he's got such a long history with electric vehicles and the wider electric vehicle, uh, you know, industry uh, in in the Europe. In the Europe, um, he runs a company called Mobility Service, which is a car leasing company uh, based in the Netherlands, and uh, they're very involved in the. Uh, very excited about this. I'm going to try and contain my excitement and make just communicate the important facts. But we're doing a show, as some of you and many of you will probably know, a live show, first time ever in Amsterdam. Uh, on the 20th, 21st and 22nd of May. We've moved the dates back in case you're not aware of that. It's on our website and all that stuff. And uh, uh, Mobility Service are going to be there big time. Um, and we're very excited and grateful for their involvement because, uh, you know, it, it's, it's made the show possible. And it's going to be an extraordinary event, a big event with a lot of, obviously, a lot of electric mobility in the widest sense because... The Dutch are kind of good at that. In this episode, we kind of get a flavour of what the the availability of cars in the in the Netherlands, the availability of public charging, and the reliability therein. I mean, that's kind of important because I've experienced it firsthand. But I wanted to be sure. So Paul explains a great deal about how that is. So I won't spoil all that. Let's get on with it. Why do I don't need to waffle and do a long in, intro? It. it it's, it's all very apparent in the conversation. So before we start, though, a quick mention just to get it out of the way. But please do, if you haven't yet, please do subscribe to the Fully Charged Plus podcast on whatever uh, audio download app or system that you use. It's very easy to subscribe. If you watch us on YouTube on the Fully Charged Plus channel, please do subscribe to us there. Uh, there's links in the in the show notes about uh, uh, many of the topics that we discussed today, and also links to our um, uh, Patreon page and our web page. Just if you're interested, no pressure. Never want to put any pressure on you. I'll put a bit of pressure on you to go to the web page because there's some really amazing stuff, and we've got some exciting. I'm going to call them articles because I could call them blogs which is what, how they would commonly be known. But I think essays or articles, I think I prefer, being a little bit old school. Uh, really interesting stuff on there. So it's really worth having a look at that. That's at fullycharged.show. Very easy to find. Um, and also, I want to thank our wonderful sponsors who make this podcast a possibility. The lovely folks, folks at My Energy. Let's hear from them. My Energy is putting the I back into British innovation. My Energy is putting the I back into inventing the future. My Energy is putting the I back into inspiring a nation. Recharging the world with green smart energy. Charge your EV with your PV and more. Visit myenergy.com and help to spark the green revolution. My Energy. Driving the charge to a greener future. Well, there we go. That's great that we've got the chance to do this. So proud to be able to do this podcast. It's really good fun. This week's episode is no exception. What a lovely man. You will enjoy him. He's just, it's just, this will be a delightful, relaxed listen. A bit of a waffle about electric cars in the Netherlands. Please welcome to the Fully Charged Plus podcast, Paul Harms. So, Paul, thank you so much for, for uh, agreeing to come on Fully Charged Plus podcast. Really good to talk to you. I mean, can you just, just do the quick history? Because we've had a very brief discussion about that. But how, I guess, where, where Mobility Service comes from, what, 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 it, what its aims were, why it started. Yeah. And what, yeah, just kind of where you've come, where, how you've got to the point you are at now. I mean, can you do a potted history? Sure, sure. And, and, and thank you for having me, uh, Robert. Um, Actually, there are two storylines here. There's one, the one of Mobility Service, and that is the Dutch company, the Dutch Carly's company, which was founded in 2008. 
not right. by me, but by, by, by other people. Actually, we bought that company in 2014. But right. mobility service at that time was already very interested in electric vehicles. Um, and actually, when it was founded in January 2008, in 2009, they were the first uh, uh, EV distributors of the Netherlands. They imported, right. they, yes, yes, they imported from Norway the car called Think. I don't know if. Oh, the Think. I remember. I've seen the Think. You remember yes. that one? You remember yeah. that one? <laughs> and it was, of course, it was not a mass vehicle, but at that time, financial crisis, governmental aid to a lot of banks and, and insurance companies, yeah. and there was a big, let's say, social pressure for the, the transition towards electric. There were no electric cars. No. Uh, actually, Ford bought that company in Norway. Um, because you're, that's probably, right they did didn't they yeah. yeah yeah probably you remember obama said in the administration of obama said okay we are going to help two of the big three in, in in the us but then you have to change your your strategy and your co2 emissions so they you know desperately were flying around the globe to find ev manufacturers and they both think <laughs> and and so mobility service imported things into the netherlands and that was a, actually the start of a lot of experience and a lot of knowledge on uh, on electric vehicles um, right. So mobility service and myself, I was not at mobility service at that time. At that time, I lived abroad. I'd been living 15 years abroad. And um, um, at that time, I lived in in, uh, in Paris, uh, running right. the uh, the company called Adlon Carlis. And um, and we moved offices in Paris. Right. And, and as a, um, you know, as a, as a gadget for the people during that party we had, the, uh, when we moved, we had a Tesla Roadster. Right, and, and people could use the Tesla Roadster, and the 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 um, reactions of all the clients and suppliers, everybody who was there, and everybody who tried the Tesla Roadster, was uh, was really amazing. So we said, yeah. okay, we need to have such a car. We need to have right, one. right. Uh, I know what that was, and that was when two thousand nine. Did you say two thousand nine? That was October two. Actually, that was September two thousand nine, and October two thousand nine, right. we got one. So uh, so the first Tesla ever regis- registered in France. Was wow. done by us, and that was really great. Yeah, and, and that's and that's where it all started. That's where it yeah. all started. Actually, for mobility service afterwards, it was kind of silent. It was think, and they uh, they bought the di- distribution. Of, they sorry, they sold the distribution of think to a big right. automotive holding company in the Netherlands, and they went on as a as a quite regular car lease company. Right. But and that's the other storyline. Myself, I was really infected by the electric vehicle. Uh, um, you know, um, uh, how do you say it? Um, oh, the, well, the bug, I suppose. Oh, yes, the, the, exactly, the fever. Exactly, the fever. Yeah. <laughs> sure. This is a little bit what I'm saying. Um, but anyhow, so that's where it all started. And then I came back after 15 years in the Netherlands. And there were already quite some um, some charting spots around, especially right. around Amsterdam and the, the four big cities in the, in, in, in the Netherlands. And um, running Athlon. Um, so I said, uh, as a company car, I want to have an electric car. Right. Which at that moment, was not available. I think the Nissan Leaf just came at the market. And and it was, yeah, like 2011, wasn't it? Before it was, that was no, really it was out. Yeah. It was 2010. It was June 2010. Was it? So all right. I got a Tazari. I don't know if, mm. you, if you remember that one in Italian. I do remember. I'd forgotten all about that one. Yes, oh, I do remember man, that. Yeah. Man, man, man. Maximus I never drove one. I never had a go. No, it was good. So leave it like that. It was a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster. So I drove it uh, for four months. And then I got a Leaf. And then right. that was the real start of good electric yeah. cars. And after leave, the Tesla came and and, yeah. and and that kind of cars. Yeah, yeah. So it is. History, I mean, long history with electric cars. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I was in, uh, we, or in fact, in Amsterdam for a few hours. But in uh, uh, Utrecht last year, I think September, and I hadn't. Obviously, I haven't been. That was the first time I've been to the. Ne- I've been to the Netherlands many, many times, but that was the first time for a couple of years. I don't know why. I, well, I wasn't allowed in, but. <laughs> what was a real it was a real it's that great thing when you're you, you, you it's like when you meet someone else's children and you haven't seen them for five years and you remember them as little toddlers mm-hmm. and they're suddenly taller than you are and they're grown up and it was in a similar way that last time I was in the Netherlands I remember you know we drove all around this is probably four years ago drove all over the place interviewed people did all sorts of stuff and there were electric cars and there were chargers and there was all, you know, Fastnet and all that, which I want to talk about in a bit in a moment. But it wasn't like noticeable that there were a lot. This time when we went back, I went, oh, my goodness, this is, you know, you really noticed. Like It, it felt like every other car on the big auto routes were, were electric, you know, yeah. were 
the it's last extraordinary change last five years and that's actually when we started with mobility service in 2014 we built mobility service and actually from 2015 and 16 on we really started to push electric vehicles which was right. not known in the netherlands yeah, there were not right. a lot of them and then we really launched our online um uh, our online proposition and that's where it started to fly it really started right. to fly and um and nowadays um, one of every five cars sold in the Netherlands, so 20% is uh, full electric, um, wow. which is high, but it's by far not the percentage which you, which you see in Norway, for example. No, no, no. Norway is amazing. But in terms of infrastructure, you were talking about the infrastructure. Yeah. The infrastructure in the Netherlands is already very, very, very well arranged. Uh, indeed, yeah. every corner of the street, you have a charging spot. Um, yeah. And we and and of course we need much more, but still I think the highest density of um, of charge spots in in Europe and probably in the world is here in the Netherlands. Yeah. That is because uh, that uh, that was one of the kind of key questions I wanted to ask you about because it's become a very you know because we've we've experienced a similar growth in electric vehicles in the UK, yeah. really remarkable. I mean I think in um, November and December last year it was twenty around twenty four or twenty five percent of all new car sales were electric. Which you know, two years ago it was two percent. So it's you know massive, and you can really see it on the roads. But where you really, really see it is at the rather fragile, delicate charging network. When you go to a charger on a on a motorway on an auto route, <laughs> there's a queue, and the charger doesn't work, or there's someone that can't make it work, or you know. Wow. And we're so we are definitely lagging in uh, public charging and it's it's not universal because there's some areas where it's fantastic really reliable you know you'll be able to charge and there's other bits where you go other parts of the country where it's pretty bad and yeah. it's it's causing a lot of you know there's i mean my twitter stream is a constant <laughs> torrent of <laughs> the charges don't work and you know there's a lot of it's a well, honestly, Robert, if you ask a lot of Dutch people, if you go at the street, not in Amsterdam centre, but if you go outside, what we call the Randstad, so Utrecht, Amsterdam, right. The Hague and Rotterdam, if you go outside, uh, still a lot of people will probably complain that there are not, a lot, not enough right. charging yeah. spots. But in comparison to other countries, we do yes. pretty well, um, yeah. for sure. And, and actually, in every, uh, you have these apps where you can see where the charge spots are and if they are available and what is the kilowatt yeah. hour. And, and so on and so forth. In yeah. every single village in the Netherlands, there are transports. Everywhere. Right. Wow. Everywhere. wow. That's, and if, yeah. you, if you compare that, for example, to Spain, uh, we, yes. we, just, we just launched mobility service as an online label for online car leases, only electric vehicles in Spain. Right. Uh, well, that's Madrid and Barcelona, a little bit of Valencia, and that's it. Outside right. that area, so it's, it's, yeah. it's almost nothing. Yes, I mean, I was because I was in Spain uh, earlier last earlier last year in France and Spain. France is actually it was interesting that we because I was in a Tesla, so we made an extra effort to charge of a supercharger before we drove up the mountain to my wife's brother's little house yeah. up in the hills because thought there won't be any charges there. You know, I know, and I knew there weren't. We'd been there before in the tiny village, so we would make an extra detour to top up so we've got enough to get up there and get back down. And when we, as soon as we got to the little village, we parked it in the little car park just outside the town. And there's two chargers, brand new, being put in with light, with under lights, wow, that were easy to use, touch to pay, you know. And I went, oh, we didn't need to stop, you know. We could have driven straight there and plugged the car in, you know. Uh, and that had happened in the last couple of years, you know. So France is better, but you're right. Spain was. I actually asked a police officer if there was a charge point in the town. Yeah. And he spoke enough English to understand me and also laugh because no, there wasn't. <laughs> no. <laughs> and, and probably even if there was one, probably he didn't know it. <laughs> yeah, he wouldn't know where it was anyway. No, and I couldn't that. find it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, yes, no. But I mean that. So the the, I mean the, I'm always intrigued by the the kind of public attitude because when you run a company like yours, you're getting that first hand sort of public. You know the anxieties the enthusiasm the dismissive stuff you know you'll you'll get all that yeah. full on so i mean what would what would you say the sort of average attitude to to electric vehicles is in in the netherlands pretty good again right um, if you if you really concentrate it in the netherlands and if you only focus in the netherlands and you don't look abroad and you would say well there are still a lot of people complaining about the yeah. range and about the infrastructure but but anyhow and and probably it's not nice to say 
for my countrymen, but it's a national hobby to complain in the Netherlands. Yeah. And, um, um, but, but honestly, it is, it is already very well arranged. And of course, we're not there and it has to grow a lot. But if you compare yeah. it with five years ago, and, and, yeah. and you just told your story about France and, and, and Spain and your trip there, I remember a trip in October 2016 that I took two of my youngest kids from Amsterdam to Barcelona with a Tesla Model S. Right. And the supercharging, you know, supercharging went fantastic. It's just and amazing, yeah. Amazing, you know, in, in the Netherlands, Belgium, and, 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 and France. But then in, at that time, October 2016, there was not one supercharger in Spain. There were only destinations. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that changed a lot because now nowadays with Tesla, you can drive everywhere. Anywhere, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's not a... So for, yes, in the Netherlands, we have a... And a, and a good, definitely a good infrastructure for for for, for right. charging. It is growing fast. What you see nowadays, you just mentioned Fastnet. Fastnet is there. Yeah. It was one of the thirds with these superchargers or fast chargers. Yeah. But nowadays, almost all fuel stations, almost all brands like BP and Shell, they all put uh, fast chargers at their yeah. fuel station on highways as well, everywhere. And they, yeah. most of them are fifty kilowatts, where yeah. Fastnet goes up to three fifty. That's what they put there. In reality, it's 150 or 170. Yeah. But um, there should not be range anxiety as long as you stay in the Netherlands anymore. Because you can yes. go you can go anywhere without any any problems. Yeah. Because that's always my uh, the challenge whenever I, I would come to the Netherlands. And we've, we've been many times and filmed in a variety of different cars. And the whole plan is to get across Belgium. Uh, you know, I feel very bad. I don't want to be rude about the Belgians. And actually, to be honest, when I came back last time from the Netherlands, I stopped uh, near Bruges and uh, on, the, on, a, on a highway and I saw the charger and I went, oh, it would make life easier if I could charge there, then I don't have to stop at the tunnel and all that. And the charger worked. It was fantastic. Oh, nice. It was fine. So, I, you know, because we had had some quite bad experiences in, you know, with charges in Belgium, you know, just yeah. it might have been our fault. We couldn't understand how to use it, you know, a few years ago. And I think that that is what really made me aware in the Netherlands it was the ease of access to the charging network was definitely simpler than it is here. You know, that's a, a well, I don't know the UK. I've been in the UK, I think it was 2013. And fourteen. Right. At that time, I was at the board of of a company called uh, New Mo uh, Yeah New Motion. All oh, right, they, no, New Motion. Shell Recharge. It was bought by Shell. Yeah. And, and we were expanding the business in in UK as well. But you know, it's you can't compare eight years ago. Yeah. No, it's changed today. It changed yeah. dramatically. It changed dramatically. It's a lot better than it was. Yeah. No, I mean, that's the yeah yeah. The, the, the growth is impressive of uh, of uh, all these charge pots around. Yeah. The only what what we see a lot and what we hear a lot from our clients is a difficulty with you know charge apps and charge cars. Yes. And, and that's yeah. you know if you want to drive from I don't know from Groningen or from Amsterdam to Milan, uh, right. well, it, it's getting better and better. But what you what you prefer, of course, is like with a credit card that you have one card just, or one tag, pay for it. Yeah. But yeah, like two years ago, you needed at least twenty four different ones. Yes, yes, it was crazy. No, I used to have a wallet that I couldn't put in a pocket. It was like a yeah. box. It had so many cards in it, and it was just—it was insane. Yeah, it was such a bad. Yes, that is gradually going. That is good. But I mean, I wonder. Do I, what do I mean? What are the common questions? Because I'm very aware of the sort of lease market in the UK and how that works, and what and it's and it's booming. There's no question of it. You know, the electric cars are all the lease companies are going, oh, my goodness. And the problem is getting the cars. You know, it's not it's not finding cu the customers and queuing up. Yeah. It's actually getting hold of the cars. But is that, I mean, what are the, the sort of key questions you get asked when, when a customer approaches you and wants to lease a car? Well, there's what we see nowadays since a year or two that we have two categories. We have people who already use an electric car. So they have complete different questions. Right. They are used to it. They have experience. They know there's no range anxiety anymore. And we still have a pretty big group for, you know, clients and potential clients uh, for whom the electric car is the first time they are going to use. Yeah. And then the questions are like what, what we all know for 10 years already. 
Uh, you know, how about change? Uh, how about charging the car? What is the yeah. range of the car? You know, another hobby, a national hobby we have here in the Netherlands in the summertime, we go to the to the south of Europe with a caravan. So, yeah, uh, where do I put? Can I put a caravan? Can I put a tow and hook on the car? How do I charge when I go to France? And and so on and yeah. so forth. Yeah. Um, so therefore, there are two gr- basically two groups. But in general, and if you look to the EV market in the Netherlands, it is and 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 honestly, it is very much. Um, regulated by uh, by a government, um, right. and that's also why you see always at the end of the year, the last five years in November, December, you see a lot of registrations of electric cars because right. every year on the first of January there is a new let's say regulation, a new tax regulation on cars, um, and for a long time um, the electric cars were um, pretty favorable as a company car. You you really had a lot of tax uh, advantages to use an electric yeah. car. And that's also why you saw the growth of uh, of electric cars in the, in the let's say, the professional world, in the business-to-business right. business world. Yeah. So a lot of employees got a company car and they changed from the normal, from ICE engine to electric. Um, and that's, for example, which created a, a very remarkable situation. In 2019, the Tesla Model 3 was the best-sold car in the Netherlands was the right. number one sold car. And wow. the average price of the Tesla at the time was 50,000 euros. So it was the first time in yeah. history of the Netherlands that the car of 50,000 euros was the number one sold car because normally we are around 25, 27,000 euros. Yeah, yeah, that is extraordinary. Because I mean, that was one of the things I was very aware of. So that is that explains that a bit. Everywhere I drove, I was just in a queue in a swarm of Model 3s. Yeah. <laughs> they were just everywhere. They're so, yeah. they're so common. Yeah, it's I, think, I think only in, in 2019, 30,000 were sold. Wow. 13,000. At that time, at that time, yeah. uh, 420,000 new cars were sold in the Netherlands. It's a pretty small market. But yeah. nowadays, like last year, um, also we, because of the chip uh, problem we have, yeah. um, <laughs> 322 cars were sold last year. Lowest level ever since 1967, the year that I was wow. born. Wow. Yeah. Wait a minute. Sorry. 322, did you say? 322,000 new cars. Three, sorry. 322,000. Sorry. In yes. total. In total. Wow. In total. But that's much. So, yeah, that's way down. Yeah. It's, um, yeah. That's really. And 2 million second-hand cars in the same yes. year. Yeah. Wow. Ah. Because that's, a, I mean, because that's well, an aspect of this is slightly off. The, well, no, it's not off the topic because no, 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 no. It's the, one good. of the key things is, uh, you know, that that someone like me leases a new, a brand new electric car. I mean, both the cars I run are leased. I don't own them, and then when when that lease runs out and the car goes back, that car then goes onto the second hand market. I'm assuming. Do you then? Exactly. I mean, is that how you operate? You would sell those. You wouldn't yeah. then lease them. Uh, uh, you wouldn't lease a second hand car if you're exactly. me. But although we have already like 224, 225,000 full electric cars here in the Netherlands, so that's already quite a nice uh, yeah. number. Um, 95%, at least the first years, 95% of these electric cars were leased in, right. let's say, the B2B market. Not so right, yes. now the B2C market starts to, to, to pick up as well. And yeah. in the B2B market, because of tax, almost all contracts, if not all, were signed for 60 months. And that means that there are not a lot of secondhand cars yet, because five years yeah. ago, the new sales of, of EVs were really, you know, very, very low. Very small, yeah. Very small. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so it is picking up now the secondhand market. And that's something. And therefore, if you talk about sustainability, there, yeah. there's a big issue because what you see for five years, the car, the electric cars were subsidized and then right. they come back on the second hand market, but they are very favorable for all the markets. So a lot yes. of our electric cars are being exported to Norway, to Germany, to France. To oh, Spain. right, right. They're not being sold in the Netherlands. They, they, no, they, exactly. And, and that is a big, let's say, political issue yeah. and a big debate here in the Netherlands where you say, OK, and, and I think it makes sense where a lot of people say, hey, listen, for five years, the electric cars were subsidized by the government. Yeah. So the people who were driving them were relatively low in cost. And after yeah. five years, we sell them, you know, we export them. So what do we achieve? So, and at the yeah, same no one's... time, at the same yeah. time, we import hundreds of thousands of <laughs> new cars, cars from, from Germany and from other countries, which are very oh, bad yeah. for, for, let's say, for environment. 
Yeah. So we'd ship. Oh, so, so you're importing secondhand uh, petrol and diesel cars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. All right. Yeah, no, no electric cars. Well, uh, very few electric cars which we import because again, right. then you don't have these tax uh, advantages. So, right. um, uh, and, and that's the debate, and I think that makes sense that we are subsidizing new electric cars, which is great because if you want yeah. to do the transition of a market yeah. which is there, you know, the ICE engine market is there the more than 100 years. Yeah. Um, a, a lot of financial uh, implications, a lot of big uh, parties uh, like oil companies and yeah. and actually also for the government, um, uh, they earn a lot of money with these ICE yes. engines. A lot of taxes yeah. coming in. So at the, and, and, and at the same time, they subsidize or they subsidized, because of the history, a lot of electric cars um, uh, um, but these electric electric cars, they don't stay in the Netherlands. After right. five years, they all export it. And what yeah. we do at the same time, we import a lot of, let's say, yes. old diesel cars and, and, and other fuel cars. It's such a, that I'm always fascinated by the kind of the knock on effects of a decision. You know, you think, well, that makes sense. We're going to get these electric cars and we'll, and then you go, well, wait a minute. And you jump forward three or four years and, and exactly. something like that. You would never expect, but because the demand in places like Norway, Germany, France probably for second-hand electric cars is going to be huge, particularly in the Scandinavian countries. Absolutely, yeah, right, yeah. Sure. And, and we expect also in the South European countries. If you see the the market now, you know the market penetration of electric cars in Italy and Spain is is is, is a tenth of the Netherlands, like two percent. Yeah, it's almost nothing. Yeah, um, and and you can imagine when these second-hand five years old Teslas when they are available at the market, and, and you know, especially Tesla, but the other electric cars as well, after five or yeah. four years, they're still it's fantastic. Fine. Absolutely they're amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so the, it's a very attractive market for South European countries. Right, right. But then, I mean, so the, what, the, the, you have sort of alluded to it a bit, you've mentioned it a couple of times, the, the, the kind of negative, I, I think the thing is that there are numerous similarities between our countries. In terms of characters, yeah, because we're very good at moaning as well. <laughs> we, you know, we like to have a good moan in this country. But I mean, the the sort of negative side of it, I'm assuming all those arguments are the same where where people go, oh, you're just moving the emissions to the the coal plant or, you know, it's, and the, you're going to throw the batteries away into landfill and all those arguments. I have to say they are diminishing those arguments, I don't hear them as often now as I used to. It's, but are it's you getting that, that 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 negative attitude exists in a way in the Netherlands as well? Exactly. And since we are in this market already for more than 10 years, we yeah. have heard all the arguments. Yes. And, and I was just, really, Robert, I was just, coincidentally, yesterday, it's that, you, that you are telling this now, but just yesterday I was talking to one of my colleagues and they said you know, we both were talking about the, the fact that not so long time ago, you heard a lot of people complaining about the electric cars not making any noise. And they said, yeah. you know, yeah. pedestrians, you have to put just, noise yeah. on it. That whole discussion is gone. It's disappeared. I don't, I, yeah. I, I don't know I don't know if you have it in, in the UK, but here in the Netherlands, it's completely disappeared. Nobody's talking yeah. about it anymore. No. no, not at all. And what I, because the argument I used to give, you know, when people said, so I used to do, you know, I will, hopefully we'll do them again one day, kind of public talks, question and answer sessions to you know, schools and colleges and, and organizations, all sorts of people. And they're really good fun when they ask questions. But that that one used to always come up and I go, I don't know if you've heard of this small British car making company called Rolls Royce, who spent over 120 years making their cars as quiet as possible. And no one ever mentioned, I don't, I might get run over by a Rolls Royce. <laughs> their whole ethos was to make us a really quiet car, you know, it's just... Yeah, you're completely right. But yeah, no, that, that, and those excuses are fascinating because that's become, I'm sure you, you know, I'm sure you're aware of this as well, but the real challenge now, you know, I think when, when you and I first experienced electric cars and had a go in them and drove them and tried different ones out, there were plenty of genuine technological drawbacks yeah. of electric vehicles. They didn't have much range. There was nowhere to charge them. You know, where, oh my, if you couldn't park them out in your house, you couldn't plug them in. You know, all those things were re real ch technological challenges. But what I feel now is the the technologies. It's like it's that's done. We've sorted that. Yeah. All the problems are now psychological. They're, they're to do with people's attitudes and fears. Yeah. You know, and understandable. You know, it's not. You know, if you've not exactly. driven one, it's understandable. Exactly. 
I remember also in 2012 till May 2013, I was working for uh, a company called Better Place. Probably you remember yes. that one. Uh, oh, yes. really? Wow, I'm fascinated to hear about that. Yeah, right. yeah. Actually, I was CEO of Better Place in the Netherlands. And, I didn't know. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. And and we had a department in um, in Germany, and that department was fully focused on on batteries, especially batteries at the end of the cycle. Right. Um, and what to do with these batteries. And that's the same kind of story. You don't, in, in, in the first, you know, during the first years of electric cars, there were a lot of complaints of people saying, no, no, but it's, the batteries are bad for the environment. And yeah. you can only use batteries for four or five, five years. And then you, actually what you can do, you have to throw them away. and Throw them away. Yeah. And, 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 you know, nothing like that anymore. First of all, it's not true because yeah. degradation of batteries is, is very low. Yeah. And that's what we've seen here in reality at Schiphol Airport. You know, right. Schiphol Airport was one of the first airports in the world where you had full electric taxis. Yes. They got, yeah. you know, by uh, the, 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 the management of Schiphol Airport said, oh, every, I think every three years they have these tenders for the, for the taxi companies. Right. And, and, and already 12 years ago they said, or sorry, uh, but, 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 but 10 years ago they said that we need to have, we want to have electric cars. So right. from 2014, these Model S's came there. Yes, they were used a lot. So we had in three years' time, so in 2015, we already had Teslas who drove half a million kilometers. Right, in three years right. Time. And then, yeah. and then we all found out what this, you know experts already said beforehand is that after half a million kilometers, the batteries of the Teslas were still great. You know, they were yeah. still for at least 90 percent, 85, 90 percent, they were still perfect. Yeah, and and so that whole discussion is also more or less gone. You don't hear a yeah. lot of that, and, yeah. and and what you see now more and more, especially with all the solar panels, is that people yeah. are using um, even a whole you know neighborhoods in the Netherlands. They use um, secondhand batteries of of electric cars. They put them into containers as yeah. electricity electricity storage. Yeah, because all those. Um... One of your, your, your football stadiums, and I can't remember which city it's in. It's, the Johan Cruyff it's, Arena. It's in the year in yes. the arena. Yeah. And that's got Nissan, a load of Nissan Leaf batteries. Nissan yeah. Leaf batteries. Yeah. And it was a big, I think it's already three years ago that they had a Beyonce concert here. And all the electricity <laughs> during the concert came from the batteries. Wow. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that I mean, is, oh, God. Because that's, the, I mean, I, I think the reason I'm asking if there is any. So sort of, there are negative attitudes in the Netherlands because every time I've been as an outsider and I'm, I'm just walking around, you know, a city like Utrecht with the cycling infrastructure that's amazing. And everywhere I look where there's a car park, there's a charger and it's plugged in and you go, oh, and then we went to a, a new housing scheme where there's a huge car park, multi-story, big car park for all the residents of this housing and all of, char- they've all got chargers and they're all Teslas. And oh, you know, So from where we are, you just look at it and it goes amazing. So I know there will be some, because everyone we speak to is so positive, you know, so, I mean, and, and not just about electric cars, but about, in a sense, sustainable mobility, public transport, walking, cycling. I mean, you know, that's nothing new in the Netherlands. Is The, the bicycle has always but, reigned But, Robert, supreme. to be honest, it, it, it is about time. Eh? It's about time. Yes. Because here in the Netherlands, you know, you know, the welfare in the Netherlands, it's a small country. Yeah. It's a very rich country. Um, the welfare is on a very high level if you compare, compare it globally. Um, but yeah. we were till... A year, a year and a half ago, we were one of the worst in terms of generating green green um, uh, energy. Huh? Right now, we're right. really picking up with all the wind uh, mill yeah. fields at the North Sea and with all the solar panels. But for a long yeah. time, the percentage of green energy of our oh, it was quite low, was it in the Netherlands? Exactly, right. exactly, exactly. Right. Ah, oh, I didn't know that. Right. Yeah. I have to. I have to tell because I'm basically I, one of the um, bizarre t- turns in my life is about five years ago. I did a, a, a the really cheap DNA test where you do the swab in your cheek, yeah. and it tells you what your heritage is. And you know, and I was hoping for a bit of exotic, uh, you know, somewhere from Malaysia or Africa or something special. You know, I wanted it to be a bit special. Nothing. It's it's Welsh farmers from Wales, but also. 55% South Holland, Belgium. That really? little semicircle. And you just go, what? how on earth is that? Because there's no clue of that in my the, my family that we know about, like up to our great-grandparents. There's no, 
there's no Dutch people or Belgian, you know, and then one, uh, someone did explain, so this is, uh, this is why I think I feel very at home when I'm in the Netherlands. <laughs> so it's in my DNA. But okay. the, um, uh, but my gr- maternal grandmother yeah. was a, a, an East, East London, a Cockney from East London. And, um, she and and so one of the theories is that she was a hu- she was descended from Huguenots who fled the uh, uh, the Netherlands and Belgium in like 1600, 1700, somewhere you know, a long time ago. So that might be the clue as to why we've got that yeah. bit of heritage. But I just always, as soon as I get to the Netherlands, I go oh, and kind of understand it. You know, if you go, I mean, you all experience the same thing. You go to France and it's intriguing and exciting and challenging because it's different and they say different words <laughs> or spain and the food's different as soon as we get to the netherlands i just feel really at home i don't know yeah. what it is i'm so a bit, a bit of a i think it's a netherlander file i don't know what the word is <laughs> yeah yeah probably but it's also a little bit the other way around and yes um, it is the relationship is very i think mutual, so and i think yeah. probably uh, it's a historical thing but i think it's also a little bit the language things don't you think you, you know, well because we i mean to, when we come to france then you know to speak french it's always difficult and nowadays it's a lot better but for example, yeah. when I was young and we, we went to France for the for the summer holidays, nobody spoke spoke English. Uh, nowadays, yes. it's a lot better with the, the current generation. Yeah, and, no, and I mean that's a, a thing I learned when I because I spent a lot of time in Paris. I learned to tell people I was Canadian, and then they were much nicer to me. Yeah. <laughs> but I was fre- I pretend to be, I do a very bad. I can speak French, you know, vaguely, just about adequately. But I would put it. I put an American accent onto my French, and then I'd say I was just speak Canadian. Yeah. <laughs> and, and immediately everyone was lovely because if you say you're English in France it's it's never very popular mm. uh, for understandable reasons we have the opposite history I think the English and the French to the English and the Dutch but anyway yeah. we're going right off topics one of the things I really wanted to ask because that is really intriguing what we're seeing happening so we have a, a correspondent uh, in China uh, Elliot Richards who's amazing and reviews all these amazing cars that they're producing in China, most of which we will never see in this country, but there are more and more that we will see. And they're not coming here. They're going to Norway, first of all. So, you know, things like BYD and Xpeng and Neo, you know, you can buy a lot, quite a lot of different Chinese cars. But I wondered if there are cars available like that you can lease now that we, yeah. we, we're not getting in the UK. I don't know if that's well, happening yet. But well, of course, I don't know what you can get in the in in the UK. I'm sure that the brand I'm going to mention now you will get in the UK. If not, it would be kind of strange. But it's the MG. The MG. Yeah. Is pretty, oh no, we do get that here. Yeah. The MG is pretty pretty popular. If you look only in our own company, you know, our, or my colleagues, I think we have around ten or fifteen MGs in our company. Right. Wow. We, just colleagues are using wow. that, and they're they're because it's a, it's an SUV, and people are, are pretty happy with it. Yeah. Um, and nowadays they have a new range of cars, and like the Marvel, and and, and it really really looks nice and, and, and good. Then we have the Iway, the Iway, so Iway, what it's called, the U5. You know, you know that one. I don't know that we do have that here. I don't think I we wait, do. Yeah, it's also an SUV. Right. We have a couple of them in the fleet. But um, is that is that I, from is that Chinese company? 100%, 100%, I don't. One hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah, uh, Cirrus, with an S. Right. Cirrus, we have. Yeah. Spiegel. I think we also have a couple of them in the fleet, but they are not really popular yet. Right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And and what we do have, and that's really picking up, that's the Maxus van, the full electric van, right. Maxus. That right. Because you do you lease commercial vehicles as well, then not just private cars. Yeah. We do. We do. Yeah. It's picking up. It's picking up. We we don't like to lease uh, diesel. Uh, no. commercial vehicles and now so since a year we also focus on the electric and, and right. we do know from 2025 that a lot of city centers in the Netherlands will actually you're going to be yeah they, 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 you know you're obliged to have an electric uh, commercial vehicle yeah. but the truth is that what, what, what we see especially in the professional world also for passenger cars is there's a very strong relation between the purchase price of an electric car and the range uh, and, right. and what you've seen for a long time, especially with commercial vehicles, if you look to the Volkswagen Transporter and the Mercedes-Benz, the range yeah. was very low and the price was very high. So yeah. they were not popular. And nowadays with the you know the platform, which is uh, developed by Toyota, Opel and Peugeot, so the Toyota Proys, Opel Vivaro and the Peugeot, I think it's called right. Express, that platform, that electric platform with a range of 300 kilometers and a pretty good right. purchase price 
that is a popular car now. And right. Lexus, the Chinese brand Maxus, because we were talking about Chinese brands, Maxus yeah. is also having a good a good offer at the at the market right now. Right. And and what I think, but it's a very personal thing, what I think why Chinese commercial vehicles can be successful in Europe is because with a commercial vehicle, the let's say the brand and the status of the brand is not so important. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I don't so know if you haven't you got the right badge on the front, but you're driving a van, you don't really care exactly. <laughs> if as it's a good the, van. As yeah. long as the price per kilometer is low, it's perfect. And, yeah. and, and, and that's different with passenger cars. You know? yes. I don't know in the UK, but I think the UK is exactly the same situation. But here yeah, in, it is exactly the same. In, in the continent, yeah. You know, yeah, people are still paying 40% more because there's the Audi logo on the car instead of Skoda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because that was one of the, uh, I got very badly caught out in a panel discussion now, because I was saying, I, you know, I don't care about the brand of the car. I, I just want it to, you know, have be, you know, good to drive and economical and sustainable and blah, blah, blah. And then someone said, but didn't you have six Volkswagen Golfs in a row, like, but in my life? And it's true, I did. So then I realized, oh, that is called brand loyalty. Yeah. <laughs> I trade one golf in for another for another, but you know, and I went, oh my god, that's so. I had Land, um, Land Rovers and VW Golfs. You know, that was my, that was what I had. And then I thought, oh god, that is that is brand loyalty. I just didn't even think of it, you know, because I, I guess from looking at lots of different electric cars, I'm just interested in the fact that they're electric and, yeah, you know, they're different. I don't care what the brand is in a sense, but no, actually, you know. Robert, that's a thing which we we are doing a lot. We do a lot of data management and that's something right. a lot of research and that's what you see especially with tesla the loyalty of tesla drivers is really oh, yeah. very high it's that is very high yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. now because i have to temper my uh passion for my tesla model 3 you know because we we're looking at so many different cars so and also it gets quite boring. You know, the, the friends of mine who've got Teslas who can, you've really got to struggle to talk about the history of art, feminism, you know, because it always comes back to Tesla. That's all they want to talk about. <laughs> it's quite frustrating. It is. <laughs> <laughs> but then, uh, so, the, that, but that sounds like, I think you've got quite a few cars that we, that I'm not familiar with. So it sounds like you are getting more, because presumably, like if you're a Chinese manufacturer, and you're importing cars, let's say, into Norway in their left-hand drive, it's not that hard to then go to Denmark and then come to the Netherlands. You know, it's not well, a big actually, deal. And you don't have to, cause to make a right-hand drive car when there's the only markets here in Australia and New Zealand, effectively, isn't it? Or India. India Wait a minute, yeah. which side do they drive? Oh, yeah, India is right-hand drive. Yeah. yeah, but, but That's quite know, a big market. There are a lot of... The Netherlands, I think, business-wise, is known for a... Um, um, it's like a platform for a lot of multinationals who are trying, like a pilot market, not only yes. for EVs, but for a lot of products. Yeah. And, and, but also for EVs. On top of that, because of the tech system, we, a lot of multinationals are based here in the Netherlands. So yeah. although uh, their European headquarters, like Tesla headquarters, are here in the Netherlands. Uh, yeah. But, but yeah. a lot of them. So all the, almost all Chinese are coming into Europe. They start in Amsterdam where they have the headquarter. And then right. from there they are going to other countries. Uh, yeah. and, and, and that's what you see. And for electric cars, I can imagine that our, for, for all manufacturers, I can imagine that the Dutch market is interesting. You know, it's a small market. Yeah. Um, yeah. The willingness of the people is pretty high in comparison to other countries. We don't have our own car manufacturer history. You know, we have right. some very small brands like luxury brands like Donker Ford. And, but basically, we don't have car manufacturers here. Yeah. Where in all the other countries around us, there are car manufacturers. And you yes. Can imagine if yeah. you want to start as a Chinese brand in Germany or in France, that is really... That's a big challenge, yeah. It's a big yeah. challenge. And here we are used to all the cars we have here, we import. Yeah. And, um, and um, so I think for a lot of brands, it's a it's a pretty interesting market, at least to pilot their products. And that's and that's what right. they do a lot. That's what And that's also what we see. Um, yeah. And we are, uh, we actually, we are being contacted over the last years a lot by car manufacturers and like now for example from vietnam i don't know if you ever heard of Vin yes Fast. Vin, Vin Fast, yeah 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, well, they already visited us and and, and they will then right. they, you know, the cars will come over to the netherlands as well and then wow. because they know because of the tech system and they know that 90 percent of the ev market in the netherlands is at the market via car leasing companies you can imagine that they right that they will come over to us yeah yeah 
Because, I mean, I think that's... Uh, I was talking to a, a young man that works for Fully Charged who was was a bit baffled that I was surprised about VinFast, about the, a Vietnamese car company. And I said, well, you've got to remember when I was your age, the words Vietnam meant war. It didn't mean anything else, did it? When we were growing up, Vietnam was just... That was just war. That was what was, you know, it was horrendous, yeah. Yeah. you know, for many... Oh, well, all my childhood and adolescence, it was the Vietnam War. I mean, that's... And so for, for that to have happened, for them to be making a very appealing electric car, I think it's, I think it's generational, the surprise. I'm really impressed and I'm very happy yes. that they're doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Oh, it's that's a great thing. So the, um, you, you, well, then you're going to be supporting us at Fully Charged Live in Amsterdam, which we're so, so... I'll just quickly tell you about the live show. So when Dan first said, why don't we do a live show, I said... Don't be ridiculous. No one will come. It's the most stupid idea I've ever heard. I don't want to do it. <laughs> and I'm very glad he ignored me because uh, I was proved very wrong. Because I just thought people won't come, you know, but every time we've done, so we've done four shows now, three in the UK, one in the United States. They've all effectively sold out. They've all been full. We couldn't sell any more tickets. And wow. particularly last year, I think, was the big surprise because because of COVID and because you know, there would be naturally, uh, you know, people who you'd think wouldn't come, but it was absolutely, it was a, a great success. So we're so excited about doing it in, in Amsterdam. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, and, we've and moved, we, so we've we, moved it back. You know, the dates have moved, shifted back, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's in May, May. now. Right? It's and, in May, it's yeah, good. which I think is good. I was, I'm very happy about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, to visit the Netherlands and Amsterdam in March is not the best idea. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> But I'm I'm intrigued to think because you'll know this much better than I, whether would you expect people to come there from Germany, Denmark, France, Belgium? I don't know. Would to come from other neighbouring countries? Yes, I'm sure about right. it. Right. First of all, because the distances are not that big. Yeah. Secondly, especially May, I think there are a lot of you know events always here in Amsterdam, but Amsterdam. In May is it's yeah, very beautiful. It has nothing yeah, to do with electric cars, but it's just it is fantastic. It's beautiful. It's yeah. great. And um, again, I think with this history of electric cars in the Netherlands and the infrastructure, people who are interested in this subject yeah. know that it's a nice market where you can you know you can me meet a lot of uh, peers. You can yeah. uh, hear to all these nice discussions. You can really learn in two three days. I saw the subjects and I saw yeah. what we're going to talk about in, in in two three days. You're completely updated. So yeah. yes, yeah. I'm sure that a lot of people have uh, have big interest in coming over. Yeah. Oh, it's got, I mean, because that is one of the the surprises for me was the, you know, I think I've I've always been the skept, the one that was most skeptical. I was doubting that people would want to come along there, and there was a really good lesson for me at the la at last year's show in the UK. There was a discussion at eleven thirty in the morning about what I'm having done here: electric boilers, you know, yeah. heat pumps and electric boilers. So it was the boiler. It was all about boilers. <laughs> And I thought, who's going to go to that? I walked at the back. I wasn't involved in it. I was going to do another thing. And Dan was on stage with four people in the, uh, you know, the heating industry. And the, the theatre was packed to wow. the walls with people standing. And there would have been probably 2,000 people watching that event. And wow. you'd go, gosh, there is, in I've got to get over my doubt, you know, that there is a lot of interest in that and people want to learn. And, of course, those people talking are in that industry – as a general person in the world, you would, you know, not get the chance of hearing that exactly very often. Exactly, so, and, yeah. and I think on top of that, beside the very interesting subject, because you know, over the last ten years, I've seen a lot of the, and I've I've visited a lot of these events. But honestly, in the first five six years, it was always the same. You know, we always met the same group of people. Yes, uh, like yeah. the guy from Fastnet, the guy from New Motion, the guy from EV Box. Always the same yeah. places. I'd same say. people. And there would be yeah, a Nissan Leaf, a Renault Zoe, and a Tesla. You know, that would be all that there would be there. Yeah, exactly. But now yeah. it's really, you know, at that time we were all like, you know, fighting for the same cause almost. Eh? We want to yeah. change the world with electric vehicles. But now we all see there's not one day, probably in the UK the same, but here in the Netherlands, there's not one day when you can see an article, can you read an article yeah. on the internet, uh, in the newspapers, you know, Every day people talk about it. So if you have yeah. such a big and such a great event, what you are organizing, yeah. and not only an afternoon, but three days. Um, yeah. and, and, and 
and honestly it's also i think what what will help a lot is that it's probably one of the first time there will be a big event after all this covid yes uh, yeah the, the covid disaster let's call it let's call it this way yeah so yeah. i think people are almost you know they are you're really willing to go to an event and willing to meet each other in person and talk about yeah. this very interesting subject it does make a big difference doesn't it that because also i've never been to the is it the right the the yeah. Where the where the the venue where we're doing it, I've not I've never been there, so I don't know what that's like. But I'm it looks big <laughs> from it the is. pictures. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty big. It's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. It is the center for international events here, right. actually in the Netherlands. It's in Amsterdam. It's for the Netherlands. It's the uh, the place already for decades, really right. for decades. Yeah. yeah. So what I mean, what in the next sort of I don't know couple of years, what do you see? Do you, I mean, do you just see a continuous, you know, in effect, in effect, transition from combustion engines to electric vehicles in terms of the Dutch market? I mean, is that is there anything that you're kind of going? That's a goal that we want to do, or th- let's hope this happens. Is there a? It is going particular? to happen. It is going to happen for sure. And and but at the same time, because uh, as I said before, the Dutch government, uh, you know, over the years they made. Um, the use of electric cars in terms of tax subsidized, subsidized money less and less attractive. Right. Um, that has an impact on the new car sales or the new EV sales as well. At the same right. time, like five years ago, you had the Tesla Model S, the Model X, the Nissan Leaf, the Zoe, and that was more or less it. Yeah. Nowadays, there are at least 50 or 60 yeah. different alternatives who are all good. And, and every... Almost every week, uh, uh, another brand is yeah. launching a new model. So yes, that will go on for sure. That will go yeah. on for sure. Um, but I think that the you know the biggest changes we will see now in the markets I just mentioned. I think if you if you look more in the south southern part of Europe and the eastern part of Europe, where right. the penetration of electric vehicles is still extremely low, there I expect that the coming five years the transition will really you know take off. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and here it will, you know, the market will go on. The, yes. The, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, the, I think the 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 one thing I ho- hope for more than anything else is, a, a, you know, a, a fully implemented, easy to use, reliable public charging network. I think once you know, we and we are approaching that. You know, it is getting so much better all the time. I went to I went to a, a what was a petrol and diesel you know, fueling station in, in London, right in the middle of London, in Fulham, in West London. And it's been, it's owned by Shell and they've gutted it and it's now uh, 12 rapid chargers under a solar canopy. And it's it's branded as Shell and it's a, it's Shell Recharge, it's all that stuff. And that's an extraordinary change. And I just went there, I went there in, in a Kona and plugged in and used it. And there's, there's a, you know, Wi-Fi, toilets, a shop, you know, coffee, uh, and it's kind of already become normal. I saw yeah. people just using it because that they needed to fill their car up. You know, yeah. t- takes t- few, twenty minutes or something, fifteen twenty minutes, and that's yeah. you're right. And, that, and that's you know that's just got to become universal. Like it, it, you're so much further ahead in the Netherlands. I think I'm only saying this because I want people who are listening to know that it is possible. <laughs> but, you know, you get to a mo- you're on the motorway and you pull off and you need to charge the car. There is a charger. It does work. It's easy to use. You know, that's, there yeah. is no there is no need for range anxiety at all in the Netherlands. No, no. not at all. You can go everywhere any moment of the day. You are yeah. everywhere. It is you can charge everywhere. So even yeah. if you're if you have only ten percent in your battery, you just step in the car and you, you start to drive and you can you'll find a charger, yeah, exactly, yeah. without a problem, without a, and even in the Netherlands already with only one tag you can do that. You don't need these twenty five or twenty four different right uh, yeah. charging apps and and and, and tags or, or cards or what's what. Yeah. Uh, so that's that is and and that's something what we should develop. We all should develop on a European yeah. level. And, and 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 what we don't have yet in the Netherlands as well is also the charging costs. Still, there are, yeah. there are immense differences between yes. the charging costs. Uh, yeah. And I think yeah. because the market is still relatively small, but I, I expect that also the government and even the European Union that they will step in and they will, you know, there will come a, regu- a regulation for this for sure. Yes, I think it has there to. There are already yeah. talks, and and we know that it is going to happen. The only the question is when it's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Because actually, that's one thing I want would like to ask you. Uh, you know, when if for people who can charge at home, 
okay, here's a difference between I know because I remember talking about this before the 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 British and the Dutch markets is that we're about sixty two percent of our households there is somewhere off the street to park a car. So that means it's about forty. It's you know forty-ish percent. There are people of houses can't do that. But I think in the Netherlands it's the other way around. I think it's something like sixty percent of people. You know, there's that you park your car on the street. You, if you've got a car, you don't yeah. have a space to put it next to your house. Um, yeah, I don't, honestly, I don't know I don't, the percentages. But if you look to the big cities, it's yeah. even, probably it's even more. You know. Oh no, it's way more, and that would be the same here. But yeah. overall, I'm I'm amazed. It's 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 as high as it's it, it, there's there's as, as there are sixty percent of our houses you can park your car off the street. I think that's that sounds higher than I would have thought. Yeah, you know having having but uh, you know I grew up in a house in a village that we couldn't we didn't have anywhere to park a car at a house. It was even though we weren't in a city, we were in a small village. But yeah. but I mean, is that uh, I'm just, what I'm, I was meant to ask about was. The cost of charging, and that's what made me think of it, is, you know, I charge my car for the vast majority of the time at home using off-peak electricity, using much cheaper electricity at night. And is that the same? Are there variable tariffs like that available in the Netherlands? Is that yes, a similar yes. thing? Yes, and there are even right. companies already for, for some time, companies who created apps and even software where you can use the lower prices during night and, and, and yeah. so on and so forth. It is, it is used. It is not widely used yet but that's right. the future 100 percent yeah. sure that's the future um, well particularly if you've got a lot of wind once you've got a lot of wind power that's sure. when it starts to make sense because at night and, it's going to be cheap and you know, yeah. Robert, it, it doesn't make sense when when we all come home let's say at five thirty at six and we all start you know we plug in our cars and we start yeah. to charge it well we don't need it till the next morning seven o'clock in the morning so yeah. why should we charge it at, at, at six in the evening you know we yeah. can charge it two at night um, yeah. But then nowadays you just plug it in and it, st- it starts to charge. And, and and therefore I say there are already companies who created apps and software yeah. where even if you plug it in, um, it doesn't it, start. Yeah. It doesn't start. It starts when when there is availability and when yeah. the price is lowest. Uh, and so for sure that that's it is already here, but it will grow very fast. Yeah. And it should because yeah. it also you know it, it also lowers the impact on the infrastructure. Yeah. And that's what we no, will actually do. Otherwise, the infrastructure will explode with all these electric cars. Yeah, but I mean that's so. That must be, I'm assuming, part of your job with new with people who've never driven an electric car. I mean, there, there there is quite a lot of stuff to learn when you first get an electric car because it's not like a. It's just you just don't use it like a petrol car. I mean, it has. It's a very different use case, isn't it? So yes, and quite no, a big education. It, yes and no, because again, these companies who who have this software and the app. Actually, you don't have to do anything. It's, it's no, you, once no. you install the app, and then the system is doing it for you. And, yeah. and as we just said, almost all fuel stations on the highways in the Netherlands they do have a fast charger. So yeah. it's almost like even if you if you live here in an apartment building in in Amsterdam and you leave Amsterdam because you want to go I don't know where to your family fifty kilometers from here, well you drive on the highway and the first petrol station you stop. And you 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 know you charge her for fifty minutes. You drink a cup of coffee. You go through it. Yeah, yeah. So there's not yeah, really yeah. you know a need to explain a lot of things because that's no. the same when you have a petrol car. When you leave the house with a petrol car with only two liters, you, you need, also have to fill. It. You need to buy some petrol. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's very interesting. No, very good. That is brilliant. Well, look, I'm really looking forward to uh, seeing you in uh, in Amsterdam in in May. But, uh, it's going to be great. It's amazing. Yeah. So I mean, and it'll be. Will you have cars on display there? Are you going to have a range of vehicles that you you lease? Is that one of yeah, the? For sure. I should know these things. I'm sure Dan has no, told I, me, but I'm afraid it's... I should know it as well. But I know I'm not for sure that Tilly will take care of it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's good that we both don't know, but we're very confident that it will happen. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Well, that's been really good talking to you, Paul. Thank you so much, and it's really uh, really fascinating. Just, to, I mean, I think it's. Sort of, you know, I'm thinking mainly of our kind of British listeners, which is only a, a, a small chunk, but also I think American people who in, in the United States that listen to this podcast will be fascinated to see those kind of variations in Europe. Because often it would be, particularly in America, they just see, oh, Europe, they've got loads of electric cars because they've heard about Norway. And they might, might not know, well, actually, go to Spain, there's quite a few less, or Italy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> actually, that was... I've got, 
I love Italy and I love the Italians, but we we were down in um, the south of Italy in a te- I drove down there a few years ago in the Tesla, yeah. and there was a charger in a small town, and they and they had a big sign and it said ele- ele- you know I can't remember the Italian electrical ve- vehicle stuff anyway. And we got there and it was basically in bits. It was for the the. The cables weren't connected. It, it looked wonderful. It was beautifully yeah. designed. It had big signs around it. But when you lifted up the CCS cable, it just came away. The whole cable. It wasn't. It had never been. It, it had never been on. <laughs> I had. I had actually last week when I was in our new office because we opened. We were open for business, as we say, from the from the eleventh of um, of uh, January. So a week ago. Right. Uh, in Barcelona. Yeah. So I was at the right. office in Barcelona. And what you do in Spain, like here in the Netherlands, when you're at the office, in the morning you you know, you drink a cup of coffee with your colleagues in the yeah. office. You don't do that in Spain. You go right. outside and you go to a bar and you take a, a cafe con leche or cortado. Yes. So I was sitting at a bar with my colleagues and, and just an opposite of that bar, there was like what you said, like in what you had in, in Italy, there was a a, um, a Repsol, that is the local oil brand, uh, a fuel right. station, and a brand new fast charger. So I right. was really impressed. It looked fantastic. So I went inside and I asked the guy from from the fuel station, I asked, how does it work? What kind of, you know, how can I pay with a credit card, with yeah. a debit card? How does it work? And he looked at me and he said, well, it's there for three months. I don't have a clue, but it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so they just put it yeah. there. It was at three months. It was not connected. It looked fantastic. But yeah. 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 Oh, it doesn't work. Sorry. But yeah. I'm afraid that's pretty. Yes, that's, uh, that does sound very, very familiar and plausible. It's not. It will get better. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave it on that. It'll get better. Eventually, you'll be able to go to Spain and the, all the charges will work. 100% <laughs> for sure. The machines are yeah. there. It's a matter of connecting them. And if it's, it's a matter of supply and demand. Like yeah. You know, yeah if yeah, there's a lot of yeah. demand, then... You know, you'll, you'll make it work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Brilliant, Paul. Thank you so much. Really good talking to you. And we'll see you soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, it was great fun talking to Paul. Can't wait to meet him. And we've never met yet. This is, we've only met online. So uh, we're looking forward to uh, meeting him uh, in real life in Amsterdam in May. May the 20th, 21st, and 22nd, to be precise, in Amsterdam. If you are anywhere in the region, as we discussed in this episode, if you're in any of the neighboring countries, please do come along and see the show. It, there'll be the best people speaking there amazing things on display electric boats i haven't really mentioned but there's going to be quite a lot of electric shipping in the canal that's right next to the rye to the exhibition center where we're doing the show in so there's going to be a lot of that there for sure anyway that's all i'm not going to talk about subscribing i did that at the beginning i'm just going to say as always if you have been thank you for listening